own creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I'm uploading a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Oh my word, I cannot wait to show you what I have done to the wall in my craft room. This is amazing. This wall is, oh my word, I can't even tell you because if I tell you, I'm gonna give away what I did to it. And that's part of the fun on my channel is the suspense of finding out what I do with whatever it is I'm doing it with. Okay, that was a mouthful. You know what? I am so excited because I've got a craft room now because my son is no longer holding that room hostage. Go figure. My son moved out a year ago and after he moved out, he left his furniture in the room and held it hostage so he could still come home three to four times a week, which I absolutely loved. And so I just had to stay patient because I knew that there was going to be a time when he bought a house, which he just did, and he would no longer be coming here. And that's okay though, because he lives six minutes from me. So I can go and visit him whenever I want. And now I get a craft room after how many years? And so I am having a lot of fun really decorating this room and doing things to it that I have just been thinking about and sitting with for I don't know how many years. And so today I'm gonna show you what exactly I do to the main wall in this room that makes it look so rustic and amazing and it just, Oh my goodness, it does so much to the room. I can't wait to show you. So let me quit my gabbing. Let's go head into my craft room and let's do some DIYing. Because why not? I got a craft room now. Alrighty, so this was Allie's nursery slash room, which is now going to be my craft room. And yes, the comforter does not match because that is Ray's comforter because Ray got COVID early on and so we moved Allie out of this room and put her into this room which was Ray's room and because we didn't have time to move all the furniture we did what we could to make it safe And because Allie's bedroom was closest to a bathroom, you could see here that I went ahead and plasticked off this area of the house so we could isolate Ray and I could bring him home and take care of him. And so this was Allie's room before. You can see that I was really into the pinks and greens in the wallpaper and I went ahead and painted it with Dun Edwards paint in the color of Chaparral and I moved Ray's furniture from his old room into this room because even though he wasn't living with us anymore, like I said, he was still coming to visit. So now the room is empty. We've got a clean slate and this is the wall before. I wish I would have gotten a better picture of it. I am so sorry, but you can see it's just the plain beige wall. I'm going to start off by taking off the plates for the outlets and right next to it is a phone jack outlet. Now when I painted this room during COVID, I did paint over the switch plates and the outlet plates because they were pink and green because of Allie's room previously and because this was happening, this transformation was happening over this past year during COVID, I didn't want to really go out any more than I needed to to get things like outlet plates and so I figured for the time being I would just go ahead and paint them and because they are painted on you do need to take a razor and kind of cut through that paint so it will come off because if you don't you're going to tear the paint. Now with this phone jack I did such a good job of painting it that I painted over the screw so well that I couldn't unscrew it and so yeah I am getting aggressive with this and I'm just going to take it off and uh, worry about patching up the paint if I need to after. For this DIY, no fancy tools are needed. I'll be using a cutting mat, a ruler, a dry erase marker, and I will also be using a measuring tape. 
And along with this measuring tape, we are also going to need a razor. I don't have my safety razor, so I'm just gonna have to use Jeff's because I dug into his toolbox. And we're gonna head over to Lowe's and we're gonna look at this style selections. What is style selections? It's vinyl planks. And the vinyl planks that I'm using are in the color of antique woodland oak. Mm -hmm. I'm going brown, of course I am. And would you look at how gorgeous these planks are? Now these are a vinyl plank, but look at the detail. You're gonna get 40 pieces in this, which is gonna cover 60 square feet. So for this wall, it is 10 feet tall by 13 feet wide. I'm gonna need 130 square feet. One box gives me 60, two boxes is gonna give me 120. So I picked up an additional 24 planks for good measure, just in case I mess up and I need to recut a couple. I'm gonna say that this is a pretty basic size plank. It measures out at 36 inches long by six inches wide. Now we need to cut these planks in half, a couple of them. And so to do that, we're gonna measure out at 18 inches, which is half of 36, and using our handy dry erase marker because when we mark on these floors, we wanna be able to erase it and not have a bunch of markings on our flooring. And so by using the dry erase marker and just a little bit of saliva, the marking comes right up. When I mark my planks, I mark them um, on both ends, the top here and the bottom. So when I place my ruler, I know that I'm gonna cut a straight line. When cutting these, a lot of people like to cut it on the paper side. I don't, I really don't because when you cut it, it rips the vinyl on the front. And so I found that if I cut on the vinyl side, I get a nice clean line on the vinyl versus it ripping when we snap it. So by placing the ruler on the two dots that I made and just scoring the panel, we're not trying to cut through it, we're just gonna score it. You can see the score line and by bending it, it snaps and look at that clean cut. Now we're just gonna take and fold our plank and right on that fold using our razor, we're gonna cut off the paper. I'm not gonna peel the paper off because I don't like to expose the adhesive and get lint on it, but now we've got two pieces that measure out at 18 inches. Now when doing these, we're starting off with an 18 inch panel. You wanna make sure that this side, which is the side that we didn't cut, is the side that touches the next panel that you place. You want the edge that you cut up against the wall and that's gonna give you nice clean seams when your planks meet. And so again, I'm gonna go ahead and just place my plank on the wall and the end that I cut is right at the corner of the wall and the end I didn't cut is gonna be exposed where we're gonna place the next plank. Now, because I started off with a half plank, which is the 18 inch plank as our first plank that we laid, now every plank after that one in this row is going to be a full plank, which is the 36 inch plank until we reach the end of the row, which means we may need to cut that plank. So in each row, you're gonna have to cut one, maybe two. Every other row will be two, and every other row will just be the one plank, and you'll see as we go. So I wasn't super happy with the way the planks were adhering to the wall. One, I've got a textured wall, and two, I used a satin paint. So after a bit of research, I found that if I used this 3M High Strength 90 Contact Adhesive Spray, on the wall before I put the planks on that it would help adhere the planks to the wall. Now, when you spray this on, you do need to let it set for about three minutes so that glue gets good and tacky. Then you're good to go with applying your planks. Now, these planks do have adhesive on the back of them, but I will tell you that in my experience of working with these planks, there are some planks that have a great adhesive and there are some brands where the adhesive isn't great on the back. And so I found that with this brand, the adhesive wasn't great on the back. I had just done a DIY using other planks from Home Depot and the adhesive on the back was ridiculous. If you don't wanna use an adhesive because maybe you're afraid it's gonna ruin your drywall, you can use these half inch finishing nails. You can get a pack like this for about $3. They are, like I said, a half inch long and you can just hammer these into the panels. So if you wanna take the panels off, 
When you take them off, all you'd have to do is fill in the holes with some patch and paint. I'm not real worried about it. I, I really am not. And so I think I'm gonna be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the spray adhesive. I think it's quick, it's easy, and I'm a little bit worried about the finishing nails showing, although I did do it on one plank and it didn't show really bad. And I think that if I really wanted to, I could do it and it would just add to the rustic um, character feel of it because wood has nails in it. Now I am at the end of the row here. And so again, this would have been a 36 inch plank that I place here, but because obviously a 36 inch one isn't going to fit, I do need to measure this last one and cut it. Alrighty, so we're getting places. We are moving on to the second row here, and before I even get started with taking the paper off the back, I'm getting a bit wiser, and I'm gonna spray the whole row with adhesive before I even start removing the paper, so that way it is giving it the time it needs to get tacky. With this row, we're gonna start off with the full 36 inch plank, because on the bottom row, we started off with the 16 inch. And so with this row, there is gonna be a bit more cutting because I've got the outlets and I've got two on this wall and I've got the phone jack, but with the phone jack, I'm covering that up. With the outlets, I'm just gonna take my dry erase marker and I'm gonna eyeball it. You can see where you kinda need to cut. And so I'm gonna go ahead and make the lines. Now keep in mind, you're gonna have an outlet cover. So your cuts don't have to be perfect. You wanna make them as neat as you can but it's pretty easy and so once i made the marks i'm just using my ruler and i'm just gonna score where those lines are to kind of take out that half square i guess now when removing a piece that we're going to be removing there in the center which is that square it's easier if you remove the paper first and then go ahead and kind of do it like a punch out because it breaks apart pretty easy and you can see that i've got my hole where my outlet is going to be and so again i'm just going to go ahead and place my first plank down on the second row which is again if i sound like i'm repeating myself a 36 inch plank the full length of the plank i have no use for a phone in this room or the phone jack so i'm just going to go ahead and cover it up with the panel I did do some research. It is safe to do that. There are no live wires in there that are gonna cause any kind of fires. And so it is safe for me just to go ahead and place the plank right over it and nobody will be none the wiser. I mean, why am I gonna cut it out and put a plate cover there if I don't need it when I can just cover it right up and just like that, the phone jack is gone. With the rest of this row, we're just gonna move on placing the 36 inch planks down until I reach the end of the row. And again, that will be a plank that I need to cut some of the length off of. We are now on the third row. And with this row, I decided to get a bit braver. I am applying my adhesive first and I decided to do enough of the wall to do a couple two or three rows. Now I will tell you, you can see the curtains moving in the background. You do wanna make sure that you are in a well ventilated room because this spray adhesive does have a strong odor to it so now i am on the third row and with this row we are going to take the other half of our plank that we cut in half at 18 inches because we started the first row off with an 18 inch plank we're going to take that other plank and with the side that we cut we're going to go ahead and place that up against the wall the corner of the wall and we're gonna make that our first plank that we place. Now you will see that this is the brick style pattern that I'm using because now you will start to see that every other row lines up. I don't wanna sound like I'm repeating myself even though I am. But again, we are on the third row and this was the row that we started off with the 18 inch plank. And so every plank after that plank on this row will be the full 36 inch plank. And so 
you're not going to cut any of your planks until you reach the end of your row and then you need to cut the length the size to which it is where it meets the end of the wall again and you will start to see just how repetitive this project is doing this diy wall really is not hard at all is it time consuming i will say that it is i had my tv on in the room and so i was listening to the tv as i did this and i would say to do this whole wall which again was 10 feet tall by 13 feet wide it took me a total of about four to four and a half hours to do it and to cut these planks it is super easy it there's no muscle involved there's really just doing a straight line and if you mark those planks on the top and the bottom you are sure to get a straight line when you cut them just really take your time don't be in a hurry and your outcome is going to be perfect and so you can see here that i was just like okay i'm done spraying this adhesive on every row because putting the planks down on each row was only taking me about two or three minutes a row and so I definitely was just starting to figure out how I could get this project moving a bit quicker and that was how I did it. Now I do want to point out that there are other ways of laying these planks down. There is a random method of setting down your planks and having your lines or your seams to your planks in different areas and that is not something that my OCD will allow me to have. It will drive me just bonkers when I'm looking at the wall. And so I like things to have clean lines. I like things to measure up. And so doing it in the brick style, I was really happy with. You just really always, I can't emphasize enough, wanna make sure that when you first start your project, you are starting it off with half the size of the plank. So again, this was a 36 inch plank. You're gonna start off with that 18 inch plank. And that way it will then be offset every other row after that which is really what you want to go for it's been a couple of hours and i'm a bit more than halfway done with this wall and so you can see that it is really turning out nicely i as i am doing it am getting more excited which is then giving me more motivation to finish this wall when i started this wall i figured it was going to take me a couple two or three days because i really wasn't sure how quick moving it was going to be but once i started seeing the outcome of it and you can just see how absolutely gorgeous this is i definitely was like i am not stopping this wall until i am done because i want to see this wall done what's great about doing this kind of diy to your wall is this is a very versatile diy and i can't emphasize that enough because there are so many different styles of wood planks out there there is a style of wood plank for just about every decor style. And so it really is just about going, picking out a style plank that you like and putting it on your wall and really just adding some character to your room or to a wall. And in this instance, I really wanted to go with that rustic feel. Of course, I'm staying true to my nature for my craft room. And this wall here, I have the intention of using for my intros and outros from here on out. I think that just having this wall in the background is going to be absolutely gorgeous and I couldn't really have chosen anything that was more suiting or fit my personality or my decor style more than this wall. And so I'm super happy with the way that it's looking and I do want to say that when you are putting these wood planks up on your wall you do want to mix up uh, the patterns. I would say that one box came with one pattern and another box came with another and I feel like when I started to do it I started seeing oh the patterns are different in each box so I opened up all the boxes and just kind of started grabbing from each box so it wouldn't look different as I was going up the wall. I wanted all the pieces to kind of be seen everywhere on the wall, if that makes any sense. And so I'm gonna quit my gabin and I'm gonna show you this wall in its entirety and how it looks finished. 
Oh wait, just kidding. I gotta show you how to do that top row. I got so stinking excited about it being done, but I gotta show you how to do this easily because you have to cut the planks in half. And to do that, we're gonna use the paper from the back of the planks. And by folding it in half and in half again, and then just cutting it in half, we're gonna make a template. Now, I say this because you can't just measure that gap between the last plank and the ceiling because it is not even. It is very uneven. In some spaces, it was two inches. In some spaces, it was two and a half, two and a quarter, three. So you're going to end up with gaps. And you definitely don't want that. You want to have a nice, clean line up there. And so to do that, if you just take the paper and you're gonna use it, like I said, as a template. We're gonna place it right up against the corner of the wall. We're gonna line it up neatly with the bottom planks so it fits perfectly. It's not overlapping anywhere because if it overlaps, your plank piece that you cut is gonna be too big and you're gonna have to trim it and then it gets messy. So with this, it really is best just to get it right on the first cut. And you can see just how I'm placing the paper in there. Once you get the paper in there, if you just run your finger along that seam between the ceiling and the wall, that corner, then you're gonna be able to fold your paper down and you're gonna get the perfect template for that piece to make. Now, this isn't a template that you can reuse over and over down the rest of the wall because it is uneven again. So you're gonna have to redo this part two or three times until you finish that whole top part and so just by folding it then you can take it down you can place it on your plank and using your dry erase marker you can go ahead and trace it and when you do trace it though you're gonna want to cut inside the line that you marked because if you do it on the line or above the line your piece is going to be too big so you're going to want to cut right inside the line that you traced on your plank And there, I just took this wall from being a regular drywall textured painted wall to something so rustic and so beautiful, and it cost me about $120 to do it. Now, I think that it was worth every penny of it because I love the outcome of this. I think that this is going to give my craft room the look and the feel that I'm going for. It was super easy to do. And so I say if this is something that you are interested in doing, challenge yourself and do this because it is easy and the outcome was so worth it. Before we end this video, I'm going to ask for your input, your opinion. I'm looking to put a chair up against this wall that I will be doing my intros and outros in. And so I'm kind of stumped. I like all of these chairs. I can't seem to make up my mind which one I want to go with. I think that they're all beautiful. A couple of them are kind of fun. Give me your opinion. Let me know in the comments below which chair you think would look best up against this wall in the intros and outros of my videos. How amazing is that wall now? Oh my goodness, when I first decided to do this, I was really worried that it was going to make the room look smaller and make the walls look shorter. And oddly, to my surprise, it had the exact opposite effect. That wall looks so much taller than 10 feet. I love what it did to the wall, and I can't wait to have that in the background of my videos. I'm not done with this room yet. I am going to take you on the journey with me of decorating this room and redoing it. But for now, I wanted to show you just how easily you could do something like this to a wall and what it does to the room and to the wall. I know that years ago when I was doing my intros, I was doing them over by my craft table and in the background I had a rock wall and I had my craft table and I had so many people asking me if that was real rock and it is. It is a real rock on that wall and I wouldn't say that that was a budget friendly wall to do and I wanted to do something very rustic 
in the craft room that would be in the background of my videos. And after really pondering it, I knew that I could use those peel and stick wood planks or fake wood planks, linoleum wood planks, and I could put them up on the wall and it was going to give me the same effect and the same feel that I was looking for at a very budget friendly cost. Now that wall is uh, 10 feet tall by 13 feet wide. So it was 130 square feet and at 87 cents per plank, this cost me about $115. But when you add the adhesive all together with tax, I would say it was right under 150, which I really didn't mind paying for it because of what it does to the room. And it gave me the exact look and the exact feel that I was going for and I couldn't be happier with the outcome. I hope you all enjoyed seeing what I did with this wall and how I turned it from just a basic wall into something so rustic and gorgeous. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to, you guessed it, 5,000 likes. Because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy everything on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive and bye for now, everybody.